take it all very much for granted, don't we? The smooth efficiency, the dependability of the modern car. Aha, uh -huh, naughty, that's not the way. But don't worry too much. Every part of the mechanism has been tested to withstand such strains. Yes, every part of the mechanism. These are the components which go to make up just one car. How many in all? Close on 20,000. 20,000 component parts, the sum total of whose reliability is the measure of the comfort you enjoy, the speed with safety to which you are entitled. On their performance depends the confidence with which you use your car for business, the peace of mind which you enjoy on a motoring holiday. And their trustworthiness comes of a series of rigorous scientific tests, tests for wear and tear, tests for dependability. It was to develop new testing equipment for individual parts and complete assemblies and to find practical solutions for all kinds of technical problems that the experimental and proving department of the Nuffield organization was founded. Let us show you some of the more interesting test rigs designed to ensure the reliability and efficiency of Nuffield cars. This test rig for wear and lubricants is an example of what are known as compressive stress tests. There are only three such machines in existence. It yields vital data about the effect of lubricants on the wearing properties of metals. And here is how a propeller shaft is tested. It's a very practical test rig which makes it possible for maximum speeds and torques to be maintained for periods far in excess of anything possible on the roads. The factors which affect propeller shaft rotation in a car can be exactly reproduced. Varying loads can be applied to the rotating shaft by means of an adjustable electric brake. This test also allows sealing problems to be studied with ease. Shimmy is an annoying fault. It amuses everyone but the owner when the front wheels leave a wavy track along the road. Shimmy used to be the technician's nightmare. He'll tell you that it is caused by the pivotal oscillation of a wheel around the kingpin. On this test rig, shimmy of all magnitudes can be produced at will. There are adjustments for vertical movement corresponding to the size of bumps in the road. There are adjustments for frequency or the number of bumps. All sorts of complexities go to reproduce shimmy. Thus, by altering the geometrical layout of the suspension and steering system, the gyroscopic effect produced by the movement of the wheel axis in and out of the horizontal plane can be reproduced. Yes, shimmy was the technician's nightmare. But it is only by studying the complex forces that produce such effects that perfection in a car design can grow. And now, dust, the natural foe of all engines. Even under the most severe conditions of dust and abrasion, a Nuffield engine is expected to perform efficiently and to give long service. The engine shown is a Morris Minor, equipped with an oil bath air cleaner. Dust, to British standard air cleaner specifications, is introduced by compressed air into the cabinet and circulated by the engine fan. Distributor, valve mechanisms, journals, pistons, gears, all are inspected after test, and any necessary improvements can be made and rapidly retested. This special test is designed to reproduce the severe jolting a car undergoes when crossing a humpback bridge. To the bodywork is fixed a vibrograph, which records the shock withstood by springs and shock absorbers when a trigger holding the axle in a raised position is dislodged by a pull on the handbrake. Now for a fatigue test which employs human guinea pigs. It's a test designed to investigate human reactions to vertical vibrations under far more severe conditions than are likely to be met with by a normal car. They know it as the seat ride vibration rig and have taken it so often that they can now stand up to it sitting down. 
The frequency and amplitude of its vibrations can be altered at the will of the investigator. It's all in a good cause, your comfort and mine. With its aid, the damping qualities of different seats can be analyzed. And luckily, the accelerometer can take the place of human beings for the fatigue tests of different types of seating. Now, the guinea pigs can watch a machine taking it for a change. The accelerometer writes its own log of the ride on a film inscribed by stylus. It is a record which proves that, though comfort depends largely on suspension, the suppleness of a well-designed seat helps to smooth out many a bump. The transparent Perspex cylinder head used in this Morris engine was developed to aid investigation into mixture conditions under cold starting trials. It allows our visual observation of the combustion flame and shows whether all cylinders are receiving their correct mixture. Experiments with this engine have resulted in the adoption of a simple induction heater interposed between the carburetor and manifold to heat the incoming charge. This vaporizes the fuel droplets entering the induction manifold and ensures that the best mixture possible will reach the combustion chamber. Now for the pumps that feed the petrol to the carburetors. They're expected to work under extremes of heat and cold. And in this chamber, they are cold indeed. They are pumping fuel at minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Moisture from the air condenses on the equipment at this temperature, yet under these severest of conditions, the pumps are kept working without pause. At the other extreme, in high temperatures up to 100 degrees centigrade, endurance still counts. Tropics or Arctic, it's all one to these pumps. For the steering torsion test, the front wheels are welded to a base plate. It's a test far less formidable than its name suggests. Loads are applied to the rim of the steering wheel in increments of 10 pounds, up to a maximum of 50 pounds to ascertain the steering response of the system. The torsion test is important to every road user, for its object is to test the overall rigidity of the steering linkage. But while rigidity is desirable in steering, too much of it in the mounting of the windscreen may lead to wind and water leaks. It's novel but effective, this method of testing for all weather aspects. The windscreen forms the fourth side of the tank, which contains water and thus supplies a more severe condition than encountered in a tropical rainstorm. As for the fish, well, perhaps they're looking for leaks. This body pressure test deals with the ever-present problem of drafts. Yes, he's carrying the can, but there's nothing in it but a solution of soap and water. It's being applied with camel hair brushes that will explore every nook and cranny. Air pressure is built up inside the body, and now bubbles mark the exits and entrances of all these unseen drafts. Improvements in body design may well result from this test. It is a search for perfection, which takes into account even the velocity of the air which escapes. <laughs> 